What's up guys, the May Patreon rewards are now available. Cyclonic Rift, Jace the Mind Sculptor, and Avison Angel of Hope are all available through the end of the month. If you'd like to support our channel and pick up these sweet proxies, you can do so at patreon.com slash it resolves or by clicking the link in the description below. What is going on everybody? Welcome back to some gameplay stuff. Today we are going to be trying out a mono green Sterix kind of mutate deck. Uh, that I'm really, really excited about. It all is kind of based around Auspicious Sterics, which is one of my favorite new kind of uncommons of this set. Uh, it does a lot of work, uh, and in the right deck, it can seriously do some some major, major stuff. So uh, to kind of look at this deck, it is an Amori deck, so uh, all of our list is just creatures, uh, but this is going to make them cheaper, obviously, which is great for us. Uh, turn one, we're hoping to get a poke collector down as quickly as possible so it can start kind of buffing up on counters. This plays a lot like a mono green stompy list, uh, but it has a little bit more late game, which I think is interesting. Uh, so this is really, really kind of our optimal thing to do first. Uh, turn two, obviously, though, we've got the troll, we've got paradise druid, and we've got the symbiote. So obviously this is going to help us, uh, stay alive a little bit, uh, but also, uh, for all of our mutating stuff, this is just great extra value. Uh, Paradise Druid hopefully going to ramp us into some of our bigger spells, which we've got a lot to ramp into. Uh, and then Barkai Troll here, just a really, really nice mutate target, to be honest. Uh, it kind of has a one-shot deal, but built-in hexproof. Uh, if you have, like, the Symbiote out as well as this, though, or, you know, if you can start putting some plus one, plus one counters on this, which this deck can do very easily, uh, then you can actually give it hexproof fairly often, which is really, really nice. Uh, in the three drop slot, we have Glowstone Recluse, which is uh, a mutate card here. The idea is you can mutate this onto something for four. It gets plus two uh, one one counters, which is great. Uh, and then, of course, Yervo, uh, which is just a really, really solid card. Uh, a four four essentially for three. Whenever another green creature enters the battlefield under your control, you get to put a one one counter on Yervo. Then, if that creature's power is greater than Yervo's, put another one one counter on it. Uh, so, really, really a solid card. Uh, and can really pack the punch uh, later in the game. Uh, four drops, we've got Gem Razor, which actually is going to hopefully be mutated out on three, as well as the Migratory Great Horn here. Uh, Gem Razor, kind of a tech piece, uh, but also just a really nice card. Uh, able to blow up artifacts or enchantments uh, in the right spot. Uh, but it is also just a 4-4 Reach Trampler for essentially three if you get it out right, which is kind of insane. Uh, Migratory Great Horn, a 3-4, uh, ideally for 3 if you can mutate it out, which is going to help you search out basic lands, uh, which is really, really key. Uh, Nylia Keen-Eyed, a card that we haven't really seen a ton of lately, but uh, this does cheapen all of your creature spells, plus obviously it's a 5-6 indestructible if you've got a lot of devotion, which we will. Uh, and then you can pay 3 and reveal the top card of your deck. If it's a creature card, you put it into your hand, otherwise you can put it into the graveyard. Uh, so a way to kind of cycle through. And then we've actually got three Beast Whispers here. Now, this isn't usually a card I'm super excited about, but the fact that this uh, is cheapened not only by Imori, but also Nylia uh, is kind of nice because it's just going to mean that we can kind of keep this, the, the wheels turning uh, and keep gas throwing in our hand uh, to really, really do some, some awesome stuff. Uh, the Star X, we kind of already said, is kind of the centerpiece of the deck. Uh, it's the one where we can essentially get free spells. Uh, so if you mutate this out, you look through uh, exile cards from the top of your library until you exile X permanents, <clears throat> where X is the number of times that this has mutated, and then you put those permanent cards onto the battlefield. Our entire deck is full of permanents, so we're going to get free stuff, which is really, really awesome. Uh, and then finally, two end raise forerunners as a way to finish off the game, power everything up, give it trample, do all the cool stuff. So... That's what we're looking at. Uh, I'm excited about this deck because uh, one of the first decks that I think we played was just kind of a mono green stompy list. Uh, and it actually played really well. Like it was it was pretty solid if I'm not gonna lie, if I'm gonna be honest. Um, and so I'm really excited to see how this works because this features a lot more of that mutate mechanic, uh, which will hopefully mean we can do some really awesome stuff and go over the top very quickly. So very, very excited about this one. Let's see what we can do. Uh, interesting hand. I think we do keep it. Uh, we don't have any mana rampers, but we do have a nice one, two, uh, which is going to give us hopefully enough turns to find at least one more land. And if we can do that, uh, then we've got Yervo or Gem Razor, obviously coming down, uh, which is really, really good. Um, excuse me one second while I pull the wire, um, of my headphones. 
I got it. I did the thing. I did the thing. All right, let's go. Let's see what the opponent's going to do here. Uh, let's go for this, and let's get Pell Collector down. About as optimal as we could possibly get it, uh, to be honest. Um, not much better than that. And look at that. We are just... We're doing all the stuff. Uh, Blood Crypt, interesting. Not sure exactly what that entails for us. Could be Rakdos. Could be Grixis. Could be a lot of stuff. Kind of hoping we don't see a Croxa this turn, though. Uh, if we discard a Yervo, I don't feel too bad because we obviously have two of them. Okay. Interesting. Mardu. Sure. So maybe a Mardu Knights deck, uh, perhaps. Mayhaps. Uh, let's go ahead and put Yervo out here. Gets the counter. Let's do it. Uh, thankfully, this deck is just really, really good at kind of beating face, which is exactly what we need it to do. Uh, and against these, if this is a Mardu Knights deck, which I'm kind of assuming it is, um, thankfully, we've got strong, strong creatures. Um, because a lot of these decks, they take a little bit of time to build up. Uh, so, not too unhappy about that. Let's go ahead and get Umori down. Um, we'll choose Creature, of course. Counters on everything, and we'll swing in. My assumption is they kind of need to block here. Um, this has Trample, uh, so it's going to get through some damage anyway, which is really, really nice. Um, I love that this plays like a mono green Stompy list. Already it feels just the exact same, uh, but we've got a little bit more tech with like the Mutate stuff and everything, so I kind of like that. Uh, gem rays are really, really good in standard right now because a lot of decks are running like again uh, in best of one especially. Um, you're against a lot of ember cleaves, a lot of things like that. Um, good to to be able to knock those off the board if you can. Ah, tasty. Um, really excited, guys. We do have our full cycle of basic lands coming very, very soon. I know I keep saying that, but we did officially. Uh, I think I mentioned it in our Obosh video. Uh, we did officially get confirmation that they are shipped and on their way. So very excited about that. We also have uh, confirmation that our um, our Patreon rewards for this month are on their way as well. Uh, things got a little bit slowed down with COVID and everything like that. Uh, unfortunately, that slowed things down for everybody. Uh, thankfully, we're getting everything in when we need it, uh, which is really, really good for us because uh, we did not want to have to uh, our goal is to make sure that you guys are unaffected by it as much as possible. Uh, and so we were really, really hoping we ordered early to make sure that we could get them in on time uh, because we really just didn't want the opportunity of like, hey, we didn't have them. Sorry. You know, like we didn't want to do that. Um, unfortunately, the opponent just kind of waiting out here, uh, which kind of sucks. Um, but we'll do the best we can here. So. Um, but yeah, so they are on their way as well. If you're interested in picking those up, you probably saw the ad at the beginning of the video. We've got a heck of a lineup this time. I'm talking like that is a very solid uh, proxy lineup. Um, they are proxies. They're just to give you guys something tangible um, for supporting us. We, I hate when people do this, by the way. Um, if you disconnected, I get it. But like if you're just waiting out because of like... This is obviously a board position that they probably will not be able to get out of. Uh, and even if we just wait, they lose because of their own card. They're just kind of... Uh, that makes me think they're just a little butthurt about it. But anyway, um, the way the reason we give away those proxies on Patreon... Uh, one, obviously, we can't legally sell them. Uh, it's not our artwork. We're not trying to do anything illegal by any means. Um, but we do want to get those in your hands if you're interested in getting them. So... That's our way of doing it. Uh, it's, you know, essentially just a way to get a, a nice tangible reward to you guys. Uh, and so hopefully you enjoy them. I know a lot of our patrons are uh, really enjoying the proxies. A few of them post about it every time. Um, and we certainly appreciate that they do that uh, because obviously it's great for us to have that extra little added exposure from you guys. So thank you very, very much for the support from the uh, Patreon community. Uh, this is just annoying if nothing else i hate this um <laughs> they uh they literally are just kind of waiting it out um they will lose eventually and i'm sorry to do this to you guys but this is why i hate stuff like this is that like sometimes you're on a time crunch or sometimes you're trying to record a video or sometimes you're just trying to enjoy a game 
and the opponent just kind of stalls. I hate that. Um, please, if you ever get, you know, butt hurt in a game, I understand. Happens all the time, but please don't do that. That's just frustrating for everybody. Uh, but let's go ahead and jump into game two. Uh, feeling good, though. That was a very commanding win, uh, which is great. So let's see if we can do that again um, and hopefully see a little bit more of the deck this time. Uh, I hope, at least. Um, so we do need another land with this, but if we do, we've got the Great Horn uh, and a Pelt Collector, so I'm going to keep. We'll see how we can do. Um, it looks like we're against an Obosh deck, so we're going to want to be... Very proactive here. Um, well, I say proactive, maybe a little bit defensive, but we do want to make sure we're playing all, all of the spells that we possibly can. <clears throat> um, okay, that's fair. Ooh, not the card we wanted to see. We're really hoping for a land or like a Paradise Druid. Paradise Druid would have been fantastic. Get that Hexproof guy out there. Um, unfortunately now we can't even get this out on turn three, so this is not looking good, uh, from the start here. And that's not helping. Um, probably a bad keep on my end. I was kind of thinking with two lands we'd probably be okay, um, but unfortunately this is very, very bad for us. Uh, with the two migratory great horns, I don't necessarily think it was wrong to keep it, um, but against maybe an Obosh deck, I probably should have known a little better. <laughs> uh, but we'll see. If we don't draw a land here, uh, well, we did. Um, but we still can't do anything, unfortunately. So we'll see. We will see. Um, probably going to lean on the Amori here, to be honest. Um, just because uh, maybe it's Gem Razor. I don't know. But Amori is going to make everything a little bit cheaper for us, which is really, really helpful. Uh, when you are short on mana. Thankfully, we do have that option, which is quite nice, but um, chances are we're just not going to not gonna get very far, to be honest. Um, let's play out the Amori uh, creature. That means 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We do literally have to block the Anax here, which feels really bad. But we don't have another option. Uh, unfortunately, this is just a product of being mana screwed, though. Um, so, can't do too much about that. And even after that, we're going to be taking so much damage that it's going to be very, very difficult to dig out. Um, we do have to block here. There's really not an option to not. Could have pumped that up, though. Uh, which makes me think they've got some follow-ups. Um... Okay. I'm going to go ahead and concede here. We can't uh, get a multiple cre- Oh, and they're just going to shock. Yeah, we we can't block enough next turn to, to make that worth it. So, quick game. Very quick game. Uh, two fairly quick games. Let's go ahead and jump into game three and see how we do. Um, unfortunately, there you get mana screwed. You can't help that. Uh, it sucks when that happens, but, you know, it is what it is. You got to do the best you can. Um Guys, I just want to take a, a few minutes as well. I'm trying to make make time for this in almost every video where we can sit and kind of thank you guys for all of the support recently. Um, we're going to keep this on the back of Paradise Druid. Um, I just want to mention that we are really, really appreciative of all of the support uh, lately. It's been more than we could have ever imagined. Um, and truly, it's been... Uh, a great thing to have all of you guys here and we've gotten out of the giveaway and out of just push it, pushing out as many videos as possible we've had a lot of new subscribers join the channel so welcome to all of you um it's great to have you here uh hopefully you're enjoying the content uh we we've pushed out videos as much as we possibly can over the last month or so uh and i think it's finally kind of paying off for us and so it's it's great to see that it's great to see you guys here great to have all that support so thank you very much uh really does mean a lot that you guys are helping us get where we need to be um let's throw that out there what do we want to push out um i'm gonna throw out really not sure 
Uh, like, Beast Whisper is not a bad card, to be honest. Um, hmm. Let's get Beast Whisper out. It's not a very aggressive card, but it's going to help us just move forward with our game plan uh, and hit lands as much as possible, which I think is really, really important here. It also does block uh, the Stinger, okay? Um, and obviously, we're just going to need to hold off as much damage as we can now. They could have an easy removal spell for this. I don't know, but we'll see. Um, kind of trying this out as well, because in in past decks, I will say, I've been very unimpressed with Beast Whisper solely because uh, it just doesn't seem to do enough. Um, that's not to say it's a bad card. Uh, it just tends to get either burned or outpowered or something along those lines a lot of the time. Uh, and I think that that makes it... Uh, quite a lot worse. Now, that being said, that's not uh, the end-all be-all by any means, but uh, okay, here. Hmm. Let's play out Yervo. I'm gonna draw a card. If we draw a land, we'll play out the Symbiote as well. Perfect. That's what we want. Uh, and now I think we're actually seeing it do do some work, um, and that's great. I mean, it's fantastic. Very, very happy. Land out, and let's get the symbiote out there. Um, worth noting, there was value in either playing Umori and Beast Whis or, or excuse me, or Beast Whisper, because obviously this makes things cheaper, but this draws us cards, so... Um, we'll, we'll kind of see which one was the right call. Um, the assumption is that they may kill this symbiote here, but, uh, as long as we can continuously gain a little bit of life off of this, that's going to be really helpful. Um, sorry for the frame rate here, by the way, guys. Uh, it looks like it was doing okay in the beginning of the, the game. Uh, hopefully we can restabilize. It looks like we did. Um, but here we can start now, like, um, gaining a couple life and doing that kind of thing off of, off of the symbiote if they don't deal with it. Uh, we can mutate some stuff out. So, uh, might lean on the Great Horn just so we can get up to the Sterix as quickly as possible. Uh, or Starix, however you want to say it. But this way, we've got a very commanding board presence. They can start cycling some stuff. Uh, and so, if they do have the Zenith Flare, that will be a problem at some point. Um, but we're going to do the best we can to, to keep the damage train going uh, as quickly as possible. Um, and these, I mean, we've got plenty blockers at this point, so it's really just a matter of who's going to get there first. <laughs> uh, the question becomes really, what are we going to mutate onto? And I'm kind of leaning towards, uh, the Beast Whisper, uh, funny enough. Uh, just to kind of spread the threats out a little bit, just to be clear. Um, they can block things pretty endlessly if they'd like, uh, and that's fine. Um, but I'm kind of leaning towards that just so we get as much stuff out as possible. That's not a bad draw. Um, let's mutate this out first, and we will throw it on here. Um, this is going to get a, a counter and gain to life, which is nice, unless they have an answer for it, which they very well might. Usually these decks don't run an answer, but that's okay. Uh, we'll go over here. Opponent playing a bit slow, uh, though I don't think that this is like the first game where they're intentionally, you know, I think they're just kind of looking at the deck and figuring things out here. And maybe be debating on a play. We don't know. Um, perfect. Let's go ahead and get that out. Get a counter on this. Go ahead and play this out as well. Um, I'm going to throw this on here. It's not a bad draw. It's just a cheap spell, which is good for us to clog up the board here. Uh, the good thing about this is this has Trample, um, so this is going to be our big Haymaker card to kind of punch through damage. Um, and then the rest here can kind of stay up on defense, 
Um, not to mention this is gaining us some life, so we're we're kind of leveling ourselves out a little bit here. Um, but this is definitely big enough that that's going to be a problem. These one ones are not going to get, uh, you know, not going to not going to save them by any means. Um, and next turn we can actually Sterix onto this if we really just want to go ham. Uh, the thing we do have to worry about, obviously, is the Zenith Flare, but uh, they've only got six cyclers in their graveyard and only four mana. So even if they have a land, they can't they can't kill this, uh, which is really, really important. Um, it's just a matter of can we deal enough damage next turn, essentially. Uh, and maybe it's even better just to play out the Recluse and mutate onto this just so we can kind of get as much damage in as possible. Um, but we'll see. Uh, thankfully, uh, the Beast Whisper here helping us draw a lot of cards. It's actually being being, I mean, it's it's been very solid this game. I will say, um, very very impressed, which is very good. So, and it's still being a bit slow. But again, I think they're not intentionally trying to be you know anything like that. I think they're just kind of learning as they're going, which is perfectly fine. Might be a new deck for them, or they're just being very careful, which is ideal. You should always be very careful. Um, we're gonna try this. Why not? Um, maybe this is incorrect, I don't know. They could very easily have the Zenith Flare and just be dealing a lot of damage to us, but um, we do get to at least gain a little bit back here. <sighs> this is pretty sweet. This is exactly what this deck is looking to do, by the way. The, the Gem Rays are giving Trample here. Just gives us another axis that we can attack on other than just a go wide axis. Um, we can kind of do the single single attack here and still do wonders on the opponent. Um, and here we're going to just get a couple free permanents. Perfect to me. Um, and there we go. We get a gem razor. Uh, and this is going to buff this guy up again, which is really nice. That's pretty good, if I'm honest. Um, I think we'll do it again. <laughs> uh, I mean, why not? It is going to give us the best value and the best opportunity to uh, finish this opponent off. We do need to put it under here. Um, but here it's going to get a lot more counters. We're going to get three permanents on the field now. <laughs> uh, that's very, very good. That was... A very solid turn. Um, let's attack in here. Uh, and just for safe measure, we'll kind of attack in here. We don't really need to. Um, but if they've got a Zenith Flare, which they are leaving up mana for, they can kind of kill something. Um, we just have to figure out what they want to kill. Honestly, the Symbio might be the best thing. Um, but dealing 20 here, they've got to gain... They would gain 14. They've got to do a lot to, to save themselves here. And this may work out, I don't know. It does not matter really how we block this. <laughs> Sorry for the frame rate issue here, guys. Unfortunately, it's just uh, the, it's very game dependent. So that still doesn't kill it. I'm surprised they Zenith flared us. That was kind of silly. All right. We got there. Uh, that's exactly what this deck is looking to do. Uh, and honestly, that felt amazing. Um, let's go ahead and get out of this game just to make sure that we can get our frame rates back here. Uh, that felt great. Um, it feels a lot like just a regular mono green deck, like mono green Stompy that got some significant upgrades. Uh, Beast Whisper, very surprised, very happy to have it. It uh, worked out great there. So I'm excited about this deck. We'll kind of sum up our thoughts a little bit more in, game, in video two. So do stay tuned for that. But 
man, so far, I'm loving it. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below if you did. Uh, make sure to subscribe as well. We certainly would appreciate it. But thank you again for all the support lately. And I will see you in the next gameplay video, part two with this deck. Very excited.